This episode was brought to you by Curiosity Stream. The Saiga is an antelope that looks like it's straight out of Star Wars. Unfortunately, the problems they're facing are far from being science fiction. Hi, I'm Danielle, and you're watching Animal Logic. The Saiga is a critically endangered antelope that lives in Central Asia. They are the only extant members of their genus, and there are two subspecies. The Russian Saiga, or Saiga tatarica tatarica, is found in Russia, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan in the winter, while the Mongolian Saiga, or Saiga tatarica mongolica, is only found in, well, you guessed it, Western Mongolia. Their closest living relative is the Springbok, which is really interesting because Springboks only live in Southern Africa, which is very far from Saiga territory. Saigas are between 60 and 80 centimeters tall at the shoulder, are around 100 to 140 centimeters long, and weigh up to 65 kilos. Life in the steppes gets very cold in the winter. And like most other cold climate dwellers, saigas grow their coats out to adapt. Their coats also change color, from a sandy brown to a snowish gray in the winter. This helps with camouflage. Saigas are social animals. They typically form herds of between 30 and 40 members, but when migrating, they will form massive herds, 10,000 strong. It's an astonishing sight to be seen. One of the first things you'll notice about saigas are their amazing horns. Only the males have horns, and they can measure up to 38 centimeters long, and they can have over 20 rings. The older the male, the more rings he has. Mongolian saigas have smaller horns, measuring only about 20 centimeters long. They use these horns for fighting over females. But the feature that really makes them look like aliens out of Star Wars is their nose, their giant, gelatinous-looking nose. Their nostrils are bloated, significantly enlarged, and pointed downwards. Living in large herds in a habitat of semi-desert and plains, there tends to be a lot of dust in the air, and their nose helps them filter it out. Also, their enlarged nasal passage can warm up air entering their nose in the harsh winters of the steppes and cool the air entering their nose during hot summers. During rutting season, when males are fighting over females, the male's nose gets even bigger. To attract a female, they will shake their heads, making an extremely satisfying squishy sound as their gelatinous nose shakes to and fro. This is their mating ritual. Females tend to choose a male with the squishiest, sloppiest, and blubberiest nose. I mean, who wouldn't? Unfortunately, the fun for the saiga stops with a nose shake. The story of saiga populations is a saga of peaks and valleys. Historically, saigas occupied a much broader territory than they currently do. Prior to the Holocene, they were found all the way from modern-day England, across Europe, Asia, Beringia, Alaska, and possibly even here in Canada, but over the years went extinct in this range. More recently, they were nearly hunted to extinction in the 1920s, taking their population from the millions to the hundreds. Fortunately, they were able to recover due to strict protections put in place by the USSR and miraculously were able to thrive despite a strict population bottleneck. By the 1950s, there were two million saigas in the USSR alone. But all good things come to an end. And due to their booming population and the dwindling population of another horn species, the rhino, some environmentalists, in an attempt to curb rhino poaching, encouraged hunters to hunt saiga instead. This, combined with the fall of the USSR and subsequent loss of saiga protection, led to a free-for-all for the beautiful saiga horn shrinking their populations. Since the males are the ones with the horns, the poachers almost exclusively target them, creating a sex imbalance resulting in reproductive failures. Poachers hunt saigas for two main reasons, their meat, which is apparently quite tasty, and their horns, which are unfortunately still used in traditional Chinese medicine. Saigas have massive territory and migrate vast distances in search of better weather and food, namely grass, cypress, saltworts, fobs, and lichen. Yet it has become increasingly difficult for saigas to travel those vast distances, as barbed wire border fences prohibit them from completing their migrations. As a result, many saigas starve to death. 
Humans really are the reason that we can't have nice things. But poachers and boarders aren't the extent of our negative impact on the Saiga population. Global warming has allowed for new pathogens to enter their environment. Since Saigas have gone through two extreme population bottlenecks relatively recently, they aren't well equipped to fight these new diseases. Their genetic pool is very small, and if there's a disease that will kill one Saiga, it's likely to kill thousands. In 1988, a disease killed over 400,000 Saigas, over two-thirds of their population. Since, their population somewhat rebounded, when in 2015, it happened again. 200,000 Saiga died, reducing their population by over half in just three weeks. The most likely cause is a bacterial infection called pasteurolosis, a bacteria which is actually found in their noses and is normally harmless unless it enters their bloodstream, where it becomes lethal. The leading theory on why this happened is that there were unusually high temperatures and humidity in the days leading up to their deaths. And the same was true for two previous cases of mass death in the region. This suggests that the rising temperatures across the globe are a driving factor in these types of deadly bacterial infections. The most frightening thing about these mass death events is that they have a 100% mortality rate. No saigas recovered. When the dust settled, there were only healthy saigas and dead saigas. Fortunately for saigas, their survival strategy is based on high reproductive rates, with females consistently giving birth to triplets every year. Population booms and crashes might be par for the course, but we're creating a world where the saiga population peaks are low and the valleys are catastrophic. Saigas have survived for thousands of years, but soon may be facing the harsh realities of climate change, not unlike many other prehistoric species like the woolly mammoth and the saber cats. If you'd like to dive into the world of megafauna like saber cats, I highly recommend that you go watch Age of Big Cats, a curiosity stream original series that is streaming right now. The series examines the life of prehistoric predators and prey, and how modern big cats evolved alongside these predators and eventually came to world domination. The series is beautifully shot in 4K and expertly narrated, telling the gripping tale of the clash of the coolest predators on the planet. CuriosityStream is a subscription streaming service that has a huge library of more than 2,000 documentaries, non-fiction titles, and exclusive originals. If you want to watch something smart, there's always something there. To check out Age of Big Cats and support Animal Logic, go to curiositystream.com slash animallogic and claim your 30-day free trial with the promo code ANIMALLOGIC. What animal should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week. Thanks for watching! This episode wouldn't have been possible without the support from the Saiga Conservation Alliance. They're a network of researchers and conservationists who are working in several countries in the Saiga's range to save this beautiful animal. If you'd like to learn more and help the cause, please follow the link in the description.